<clears throat> okay, hey, what's up guys? It's Jamie. It is March 22nd, 2023. And uh, I'm going to pick up the girls. You know, I've never been up here. I didn't realize there was a big playground here. I turned around because I saw like an elderly lady pushing a um, carriage in the middle of the street that I was going to pull over and help her, but I guess she was just crossing the street. Uh, anyway, okay, so normally I'm doing videos where I'm talking about stuff that I like, like stocks. I mean, I, I love to trade stocks, options, cryptocurrencies I, I have an interest in, and then of course real estate is my main uh, interest, to, to, be, to be honest. And, um, you know, in, in investing in yourself. And maybe something that's a little different for me is like I think your your spiritual health is, is really important. I don't push it that much, not because I'm ashamed uh, of Jesus, but I just feel like I'm not the best brand representative. Like, in other words, if my son owned, owned a billion-dollar business or, or, or a successful business, I'm not sure I'd let everybody know that I'm his dad or, you know, or my daughter's because... Sometimes I put my foot in my mouth or, or just don't do dumb stuff, and I, I just don't want to hurt the brand. But I, I also know that that uh, this is probably the most the most important thing is your uh, your eternity, you know, eternity. Your your spiritual health uh, is what's going to go on forever. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. What I'm going to talk about today is something called uh, the uh, central banking digital currency, which uh, the BRICS. Uh, acronym for you know, the currency that I guess has been around for a little while now. I've only recently found out about, and and I think this is urgent for us living on the earth, right? Like for for, the, for us living life and thinking about our children, right, and, and our family, about about money in general. I, I talked to some different people uh, today, you know, especially, and I, I just asked them, guys, do you know ever heard of bricks? And they know I don't mean bricks like you stack up, uh, a, a, you know, a brick, um, the James, what is his name? Uh, Rick James, Brick House. Jay's a brick house. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about uh, a brick building, brick streets. I'm talking about bricks, the Brazil, Russia, uh, <clears throat> uh, India, China, and South American currency. Uh, coalition I guess you know where, where they kind of agreed to, to to exchange with each other this is turning into a big a very very big deal especially recently with the with our bank our banks uh, you know going insolvent some of the banks with uh, South um, you know the Saudi Arabia announcing that they're going to accept other currencies uh, getting away from petrodollar the dollar not being used for oil. like there's a lot of pretty pretty big things happening um, in the world that what I want to reference is something from Andy Sheck, Sheckman Andy Sheckman I believe it is from uh, Miles Franklin he was on the Rich Dad Poor Dad show with Robert Kiyosaki he was on um, <clears throat> Kitco recently I was just watching him there and uh, the guy reminds me of Ray Dalio um, talking about the New World Order There, there is some some things that are happening and data that he collected and things that he's paying attention to, to uh, paying attention to that can't be ignored, right? You can go la, 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 and pretend it doesn't exist. It's not happening, but it is happening. And at some point, it's going to be relevant either to you or to your children or people you love and care about or your family or your people you that work for you. Now, Kiyosaki, who I'm not a, a major fan of, uh, I do think he is, you know, very successful. He had some 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 um, some great information about the the real estate stuff that I thought has changed a lot of people's lives. But I mean, his demeanor sometimes doesn't always. I'm not always like a big fan of his his mannerisms sometimes. But it doesn't mean that he doesn't have some great information to consider and viewpoints. And one of the things he always talks about is gold and silver, um, <clears throat> and and how important it is. Now I've never and I, I up, up until this point. I haven't invested anything in gold and silver. So I'm like, what am I gonna do? Keep it in my house? Am I gonna put it in a safe? Uh, am I gonna put it in the bank maybe, I guess? Uh, is, it's not really producing, it's not like an asset, like a piece of real estate that generates cash flow every month or pays down the debt um, and I still hold the asset. 
so I haven't really thought much about it. But but one of the things that Andy was talking about in this interview on Kitco was, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually link that. I think it's worth listening to once or twice, uh, regardless if you agree with everything. Is that these these central banks, major central banks throughout the world, are accumulating gold and silver, and they're doing it almost just inadvertently, like very little little uh, little. I mean, major transactions, but just no big announcements, right? Like, if, unless you're looking for it or paying attention, you would know that they they uh, they have made some the some of the largest purchases in over 50 years, and that is a signal. And there's a reason. Like, you ever hear that saying? There, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's things happening, like between inflation and uh, the crypto market and insolvency with banks and the stuff going on with Russia and Ukraine and. It, it, you know, like all these things that are that are happening, um, w which are defined as geopolitical and macroeconomic, you know, like all these different things are relevant. They have a ripple effect on you right now. So whether you have whether you live check to check, which I've done, whether you've saved some money, right? Whether you've saved ten grand or hundred grand, or uh, or a uh, uh, a million dollars or ten million dollars, okay. Most of the people I know are in this in this camp. Then there's people that are in the next level that have over ten million dollars, and then there's some that are a hundred million dollar class. And I only I personally only know two billionaires, and they're not buddies of mine. Like I, I can just go hang out with them, but but I, I can't talk to one uh, as I worked for him for some years. So the reason why I think this stuff is important is I trade for fun. Like I trade in my Robinhood account money that I don't want to lose, but but if I get to 100 grand this year, it's it, it it's great, right? But it it's not what I'm banking on for for my kids and and for my future. It's kind of like just to say here's how I trade and here's what I screw up and here's what I do right. Here's the trade here's the stocks that I'm trading and you know recently with the CB uh, let me see, central banking uh, central banking D CBDC, yeah. So central banking digital currency with the, the talk of that. And they're saying that at one point there's just going to be one, right? And that's probably biblical, right? When you think about that stuff, which again, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to get into it, but I'm not going to get into it now. Um, this is where we're moving. Now, it could be this BRICS system, right? Where the, I guess there's 150 countries that are they want to participate in that, and the United States isn't one of them. Uh, and 80% of the population is over there, right, with these countries, Brazil, India, China, Russia, South Africa. So um, so these are things to consider on how that is going to affect us here as we, we buy goods and services with the U.S. dollar. And if there is a dumping of the U.S. dollars, because like, hey, we don't use it anymore. We, we, don't, we don't need this. Because from what I understand, they don't want to go green, right? They're still in oil. And and that is going to affect Saudi Arabia and all that, everything that's going on over there in those in those countries. And whereas we're trying to go green, then the next 10, 20, 30 years, they're kind of getting away from us, right? So this is going to affect my 10-year-old daughter, my 7-year-old daughter, my 21-year-old son, my 17-year-old son, your kids, your grandkids, it's going to be, we're basically watching the whole world change right in front of our eyes. Um, and we have to pay attention. There's a movie, it's called Shawshank Redemption. Great movie, by the way. Morgan Freeman, uh, uh, what's his name? Jeez, I can't think of his name right now. Um, Tim? Maybe it's Tim Robinson? But he, he plays Andy Duchesne. I know that's the character. Who is wrongfully convicted of murdering his wife. And, uh, you know, he's a genius banker. And basically ends up in um, <clears throat> in prison for life, I guess. So, one of the things that happens in that movie is he gets this little rock hammer, which is, you know, very tiny. It's probably maybe half the size of this. This little wrench tool I have here. You know, very half the size of that. Like, very small. With a little hammer there. And... Uh, and he says, oh, I like to just smooth out rocks and, and do stuff with it. So he has it smuggled in from Red, who is Morgan Freeman's character. And over decades, Andy Dufresne 
is banging away at the walls of his institution and putting in his pockets and throwing it onto the, the ground out in the, the, the yard there, the rec yard, the prison yard, unbeknownst to the prison guards, unbeknownst to the warden and even other inmates. And he does this for days and weeks and months and years and years and decades, where at, at one point, just like this, he's gone. One day they wake up looking for Andy, who is just a, a model inmate who does, a, you know, puts up with a lot of stuff, helps a lot of people, was doing the crooked warden, murderous warden, and some of those correction off, officers bidding uh, for, for a long time. But the whole time, like a chess game, like a chessboard, he's setting up the pieces for the end game. And he, end, he ends up having it all planned out where he has money waiting for him. He has, you know, the, once he has the, 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 the path where he can kind of actually escape from, he executes his plan and it's just like a domino effect. It's just like, bum, 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 bum. He escapes, he puts the clothes on, he arrives at the bank, he signs, you know, as the other person. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And they never, they never see him again. They're never going to catch him. He's gone. So that is kind of what's happening from what I, my understanding of what's going on right now is these, these big, uh, powerful nations that are against the West and, and against our currency. Like you could trade all the Tesla stocks you want and, my, and, and uh, Apple uh, and Google and Amazon and you could look for all these ETF uh, 3X uh, rises and falls and option plays and all these different things. But... Man, at some point, we're going to look and, and the whole world is going to be a different place. And it's going to be too late if we're not prepared. You know, again, when I think about spiritual stuff, I think, man, that's eternity. That's really important because we're, we're, that's a debt we're all going to pay. We don't think about death every day. We don't talk about it. My wife, I tell you what, she will not. She's like, don't talk like that. I don't want to hear it. Like, she doesn't even want to talk about it, even though she knows it's a reality and she believes in God. But... But uh, it's, it's just a conversation some people don't want to have. But it's going to happen at one point or another. And in the same token, with this fiat system and, you know, w what we deal with with, the, with dollars is going to happen. It's going to change. It's, 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 it's already unfolding. Now, as far as when it happens and how soon it happens, and all, I, nobody really knows and things can change. But this seems to be where we're going and of the high level friends I talked to I reached out to some of my higher level friends like meaning higher net worth uh, exposure you know to this more than more so than myself and I just asked them hey what do you think about this there's three in particular I'm waiting for their response or a conversation to have with them but a couple of the other ones that are still above above where I'm at they they're like yeah I heard of it but you know I don't know I didn't think much about it they're not really paying much attention to it. Well, I think it's it's noteworthy. I think it's something that, that we have to pay attention to and maybe start changing the direction in some regard and saying, okay, well, maybe I need to lighten the load of cash. Maybe I shouldn't just be investing in uh, just real estate mostly, right? Maybe and, and maybe buying companies for the next 10, 20 years Maybe I should also start thinking about precious metals. Now, this has been a conversation with, with, with certain people that that, that 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 you should be doing that. I just haven't. I haven't done it at all. I haven't even heard of this BRICS thing until recently. And as I started opening the book and reading the pages, I was like, wow, this is scary stuff. This is pretty urgent. That's why it's important that I, I see want to mention it and make a video about it today. So... What am I going to do? I'm going to learn more. I'm going to get more information. I'm not going to, you know, panic because being fearful and angry and uh, neither one of those is, uh, is is a good emotion to to react to. You can just go, okay, you take a breath. I'm not, I'm not like that kind of. I don't have that kind of. I'm not experiencing that kind of panic. But I'm just like, all right, this is a real thing. I got to like pay attention. Just like when I was really heavy, it's almost 300 pounds. My doctor said, hey, you you know, you got to do something. You're going to be diabetic. And you know you're you're obese. You're 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 at a lot of high risk for certain things. I'm like I gotta do something, take action, or you know it's gonna be someday. It's just gonna be too late. So I think, besides real estate, which I still think is a good hedge, um, 
and I, I, I do believe that cryptocurrency is still going to play a, a part of this. Do I think that Bitcoin uh, or maybe one of these other current these cryptocurrencies will become the CBDC type of you know uh, exchange? I, I don't I don't know. I don't maybe, but I'm going to buy some. I'm going to start buying some. I was waiting for it to break below 15 grand. It may still do that. But now I'm waiting to see what these levels are with, you know, as it approaches 30, if it's going to, uh, if it's going to hit that or, or pull back. I forget who that guy's name was. I was listening to Gareth Soloway, I think his name is. Um, he's, I see him on a lot of shows. He was saying 30 grand is the, the level, but I'm watching it. I am accumulating some uh, in Ethereum um, as far as cryptocurrencies go, but not heavily, you know, very, 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 very lightly. And I use Coinbase because it's back, you know, it's got a million dollar backing versus if you put your money in the bank, you at what, 250,000. So I'd almost rather put my money there, um, quite honestly. Um, so that's that's part of it. And then I think precious metals. I, I put a call into Miles Franklin, which was Andy Checkman's uh, company. I know there's other companies. I just, I just want to get some information. The first thing they asked me is how much, uh, you know, how'd you hear about us and how much are you looking to do? And, and I didn't, it kind of turned me off uh, because to me, these are pre-qualifying questions of who they're going to have me talk to. And if I said, yeah, I'm looking to buy a million dollars worth, like it's priority levels. I said, I don't know. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, it's not going to be $10 million worth. And the guy, you know, kind of laughed, but I'm sure they make money from that. But I want to know where do I, if I buy a gold bar or two, or if I buy gold coins or silver, whatever, whatever it is, regardless of what the market price is, where does it go? Do they hold it? Is it safe? Um, I, I have questions. But I think this is important because if you fast forward five or 10 years, just like real estate, if precious metals do become a, a major factor to your wealth and net worth and, and converting, right, conversions to whatever other currency becomes pr prevalent, um, you know, who knows? Maybe gold will be 2500 5000 10000 an ounce. I don't know. But I have none. It's better to have some than none. And if Bitcoin goes to a million dollars, right, or 100000 it's better to have one, right, or some than none instead of having all your money in cash and then the cash is worth nothing or very little. That's happened many times. So these are, these are things to consider. And that is all I'm trying to do today is I'm going to link you that video. I wanted to have this conversation uh, kids, I know that this is probably not nothing you're really interested in today, but I do think it's really important for you guys. And if you're a younger person, 15, 25, 35 years old, you should, you should be thinking about this too. This should be something that you're kind of getting a little bit more exposure to. And um, the, the future you is going to be, um, is going to thank you for doing that. I'm still, still is pertaining to me, but it's more towards, let me take what I have and maybe disperse it a little bit differently, right? Again, it's like going down a road, there's a detour, something happened, you're like, okay, I gotta kind of navigate a little bit different than I thought. I still wanna arrive at that destination, but you know, just having that money, I have friends that have money sitting in a, uh, sitting in a, in a, uh, a vault, right? Or a safe, and they have a lot of money a lot of money, you know who you are. And that money, even if it's safe and no one can take it from you, it's still being taken from you because that dollar bill that you have, which I, I usually don't have any, but I have a $5 bill today. That, that, that cash that you have is only, it's not backed by anything, right? It's just, it's just uh, accepted as a form of payment for goods and services. So at some point it's no longer accepted as pay, or you need a lot of those. If you have like, well, I have a hundred thousand saved. I have a million saved. Well, let's say you need a hundred thousand dollars to buy a cup of coffee, right? It, it, just think about that for a minute. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that is kind of what that means. It's like, yeah, that's it's no good. You ever see the movies where they're burning, you know, pallets of money in those Hollywood movies where they're just oh, trying to keep warm because the money doesn't mean it has no value anymore. But uh, okay. Uh, it's 20 minutes. It's long enough. I'm not even edit this. I'm just going to post it up. But um, I hope this gets you thinking. Check out that link. Listen to it or watch it when you can. Uh, I think it's very, very important.
information and, and go, you know, and, and dive. And if, if you want to talk about it, let me know. I'll see you guys.